Good job. What do you think? Just for plowing? Yeah. That's a good way to kind of get the feel of you know, the way that the thing pushes back and where you're actually scraping. Yeah. Kind of hard to hit the spots, isn't it? <laughs> this is a harder than it looks. It really is. I'm going to plow the rest of that really quick. Tabletop was too high, so I had to bring over the uh, lift for her to stand on. Yeah. There you go. Good job. And for the second day in a row, I've left the phase converter on all night long. Hopefully before too long, I'll get my compressor, my big compressor outside wired up. So I'll have to do a lot to do. So let's continue moving forward on the slow speed carbide grinder build. Now I've used this thing off and on the last few days and it works amazing. It really does a great job sharpening carbide, but it's nowhere near done. And I'll never finish unless I continue moving forward on it. So what I'd like to do in this video is get started building the work table, the adjustable table out front here that'll allow us to change the angle on the carbide inserts or whatever that we're wanting to grind right now simply using the sign vise and that works but not going to work long term so let me show you what i've got and we'll get started i don't know how far we'll get but we'll get we won't get anywhere unless we start working so let's do it so the work table that i'm going to build for this needs to be able to pivot because we want to be able to change the angle uh, in relationship to the grinding wheel here this has to be uh, mounted in a way that allows it to move. And what I think that I'm going to do, first I'm going to use this aluminum for the actual work table. I need to build a couple of these small uh, pin blocks, what I'll call it. These will bolt to the front of the grinder. They'll be pinned through into the work table, and that will give us a really large range of motion on this table. Then we'll have to come up with some sort of locking system uh, to hold this in uh, whatever position we choose uh, to lock it in, whatever angle. So let's get started making a couple of these. We're going to make them out of some of the leftover aluminum and then we will uh, use them to hold the table on.
probably too thick on the layout for it. So if you guys are interested, I know the old uh, logo was relatively popular. People, a lot of people picked up these mugs and we really appreciate it. It helps out a lot. With the new image, Elizabeth created some uh, new mugs and... A sticker. So, yep, sticker and a shirt. Yeah, t-shirt. Right? There's women and men. Yep, they, so. uh, they look really nice, I think. Uh, old stuff still available. Right, if you're partial to, to the squirrel, then uh, and there's you two can different still pick links um, because for some reason it wouldn't let me put it on the same link. So you'll have to go to both links to check them out for the, the mugs teaspring. and the shirts. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So great. Go check it out if you're interested. We really appreciate it. Every bit, every bit helps, and it's fun to see that stuff out in the wild. And the links are in his video. Yeah, in the video description.
have some built-in parallels and these jaws will open enough to hold what I want to hold today. Let's see. Yeah. Whatever these are, it's relatively hard. <laughs> some good material. So here I'm simply milling to my scribed lines. This is the recess for the grinding wheel or the disc on that unit and you know, anything more accurate than this would just be a waste of time. So that's all we're doing. Creating a pocket for the wheel to set in. You'll see. We'll set it up in just a second.
dropped it. So I've got my two little brackets here that are going to mount my table onto the grinder and allow it to pivot. And it's going to be bolted to the face of the grinder with these 632, 82 degree angle on the head. And I need to recess or countersink these brackets so the head of this bolt sits flush against the face of the bracket here. I always think they look better than just a button head or something on there. It looks more finished in my opinion. So we've got the 82 degree cutter here and got one in the vise. And I've got the uh, depth stop on my drill press just lightly set. I'll do the first one and I'll hand fit it. I'll lock down the adjuster and then just swap them out, right? We're setting on parallels here in the vise. We should be, you know, it'd be good enough for, for what we're doing here. Because we're using a parallel in the drill vise here, when we're done with the first one, we can just pull it out, put our second one in. We don't have to reset our stops, just like you'd do in a milling machine, right? Same, same idea.
So there's our two table pivot blocks. These were drilled and reamed so our quarter inch pins will press in and be stationary. And then this will slide into the end of the table which will be reamed a thousandth oversize so it can uh, pivot freely on these blocks. And these will be bolted to the front of the grinder obviously. Now I rolled these edges over, kind of pillowed the top of these, give them a little less square of a look. And I'm not finished with them, but they look perfectly good enough for what I'm doing. So let's press these pins into this, then we'll go drill and ream the table. A half thousand press fit. They just they won't fall in there, but you can't put them in there by hand either. So I just got the little grinder table stood up in the mill vise here. I'm going to drill almost all the way through this, probably three quarters of the way through. I don't want to hold on the back side just because I can do that. And uh, we're going to step drill it and then drill it to 6.1 millimeter and then ream it 0.251, right? Thousandth over quarter inch. I did some test holes. That's what works. Give me a nice tight, not tight, but nice smooth movement with no play on those quarter inch pins.
Some center punches. So now that I've got the table on the grinder, I'm gonna sh I just want to show you what four degrees looks like on it because it's not very much. And to do that, we're gonna use our little Lumpkin Toolmaker Square to set it up really quick. Now, we won't need much, probably seven to you know seven degrees is probably the maximum we'll ever adjust that grinder table to. So right now this square is 90 degrees. You would use this to set the reliefs and molds or to check an angle and move that from A to B, right, for measuring purposes. Really neat little adjustable square. So you can loosen the top knob here, which just locks the blade in. And you can screw in this bottom knob and it pushes it onto the bottom of the square and you can change the angle of it. So adjustable square. Neat little tool. I wanted one of these for a very long time before I got this one. Starrett makes some, lots of other manufacturers, I'm sure. I don't know if it was a, originally a Starrett design or a Lumpkin design, but it's a cool idea. So this is 90 degrees right now, the edge of this V block into the plate. This is a four degree angle block. So I'll just set that up and manipulate this square until we get really close. That's all we need. Demonstration. So there we go. That is close enough to four degrees for this. So let's go look at that table. We'll figure out a way. We'll, we'll talk about a way to lock it down as well. So far, so good on the table. I like the way that that, that feels. <laughs> that half inch aluminum is uh, going to be very rigid. So set up at four degrees, lump and square. And that's it, All right? So not much, barely even noticeable. And I can imagine that probably that would be the maximum this table will ever move. And you could move it in either direction. So we just need something rigid and adjustable. Just one side would be enough that we can loosen, move this table and lock it down. We can always use something like this uh, to set the angle because we're not I mean, it's super precise angles on anything with this. It uh, just needs to be close. So there we go. That looks good. I'm excited about that. And uh, next step 
is, uh, well, <laughs> next step's gonna be the handle, and then we'll come up with some way to, uh, to lock this down. So a viewer of the channel, Ernie Hayes from On Time Machining, sent me both of these handles. He wanted to contribute one of his handles to this grinder build, and I appreciate it. it saves me some work, and I get to see you know, somebody else's handiwork. Really nice job on these. He sent me a large one and a small one, said, you know, choose which one you want to use, whatever. Uh, these, I believe, he I believe he makes these for CB radios and stuff, and I believe that I'm going to use the larger one. It comes with some rubber feet as well. Nice handle, heavy heavy built. Crinkle uh, coat on the paint, really nice. Folder, I like that, it'll somewhat fold up out of the way. His email is kg4yni at arrl.net. So if you want a handle like this, contact Ernie. It was nice of him to send me these. He didn't ask for a plug or anything, but I, I appreciate it. Let's open this up and get a look at it, a closer look. So both of these handles look the same, except one is a little heavier duty than the other. So that is a nice job. Yeah, that's a quality handle. Got a good resistance on the turning. It's even got bushes, or not bushes, but spacers in there to give it that good consistent feel. Comes with everything you need, even even bolts, so it's nice. So there we go, that looks pretty good. Man, I'm really pleased with the way that that handle is. It's not gonna rattle or anything crazy like that. Got a super nice finish on it that reminds me a lot of uh, the finish that you see on Starrett tools, the crinkle coat. The small one's the exact same thing, except for a smaller version, right? Nice. Gonna put some vents in the sides of this, both sides, so air can move through this to let that electric motor cool. There is the potential if several guys were using this it could overheat. I doubt that'll be the case, but you get the idea. Wouldn't hurt. And I uh, gotta make the bracket to adjust and lock the table. It's not that big a deal. Give this thing a paint job. On and on and on. All right. Still a lot to do. But a lot closer to finish than I was. I'm excited. It's gonna be nice. I, I know it works well, so there's no question about that. Put the back on it. It's going to be awesome. You good? All right, guys, that's it this week. Didn't get quite as far on this thing as what I would have liked to, but farther than I was at the, at the beginning of the video, that's for sure. So. That's it. Thanks for watching. Thanks to my viewers, patrons, subscribers, and anybody who supported us on this project. Much appreciated. So that's it. Happy 4th of July, and we'll see you next time. The birds fly south as the light leaves your eyes. Hold on to your dream. Oh, I know you want to scream. Since the day you're born, you're just a flower on your own, waiting for the sun to blossom, hoping to break through the storm.